Good afternoon, welcome back to the homestead. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to build a chicken fodder system. Something to grow fodder for your chickens to help reduce costs in feeding them. Let's go. So the important first part of the system is the pre-soak and you're going to need two five gallon buckets for that or two buckets that fit into one another depending on how much grain you want to soak initially for the size of your system. From there we're going to drill holes in the bottom of one of the five gallon buckets. We have a 764 inch bit here so that the water drains out but the grain doesn't come through. So the most common three grains to sprout are wheat, barley, and oats. You can sprout sunflowers, you can sprout other things, but those are the three most common. Of those, wheat and barley are easier to sprout, but our feed store only had oats this time. So we're gonna be showing you how to sprout these oats. We've got a 50 pound bag, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just fill in the bottom, probably we're gonna put maybe five pounds of the barley in there because that's gonna be the best size for our system. Five pounds of barley, and that's gonna swell up and actually grow to probably about twice the size. So we have our bucket of water. We're gonna just drop one bucket into the other and get these things soaking. This process takes between 12 and 24 hours. You can leave it a little longer, but make sure you continue to change the water out after the 24 hour period if you leave it longer. So the cool thing about this process is sprouting grains doesn't require any light. If you want to put a small light bulb in, in near your sprouting uh, system, you can, but it doesn't require it because those seeds have enough energy to take that uh, grass and grow it to a certain point. After that, it will start to die without any nutrients and or light, but it's not necessary to, to get it to the point where we feed it to the chickens. No lights necessary. That's really cool. So this portion of the build is the rest of the system itself. And that is the rack to hold your trays, the system to circulate the water up and around if you don't want to do it manually. We're going to do an automatic system like that, which I always love to do. Less work in the end. But the things you're going to need are here on the table. We're going to talk about it. We need a couple of treated 2x4s. Two. You need four regular two by fours. You need six. In this case, we are going to use our grow trays for this, our seedling starter trays. You can use any type of tray. And we're going to talk about the modification you're going to need to do to uh, the different, or to the rack itself to accommodate different trays. So we're going to use these 10 by 20 seed starting trays. We have some tubing. Now, your tubing may vary, and here's why. We've got this awesome 800 per or 800 gallon per minute pump here. Now the 800 gallons in when you're buying your pump, 800 gallons is per minute at a flat level. Each foot in elevation that you go, you're going to lose some uh, GPM, some gallons per minute up until eight foot with this one. So you can pump it up eight foot and you're going to get about 200 uh, 150 to 200 gallons per minute and after that it just it, it won't pump it up that far so this is a good pump to pump it up just a, a few feet and 200 gallons a minute for our system is going to be perfect we're going to set it to go off with a timer a couple times a day but make sure you pay attention to that when buying a pump so that pump is going to dictate what size hose you buy. In this case, we've actually necked it down to our irrigation line, and I'll show you that in a second. Your pump is going to get, come with several adapters, hopefully, for different size hoses. So I'm not going to tell you the size of the hose because it's going to vary. So we're going to put ours together using all the parts that we usually have. I'll list those parts in the description below. As always, I'll list links to them, all that kind of deal. So additionally, you're also going to need a bulkhead fitting. That bulkhead is going to go in a vinyl gutter. Now, you can use a metal gutter, it doesn't matter, just a gutter. You're going to need two gutter caps for the ends of it and a couple of brackets to hold that gutter 
onto your rack system. After your bulkhead fitting, you're going to need several um, fittings to adapt it to pour into where your water reservoir is. In that case, we have this 18, I think it's an 18 quart tote. How much is this? 30 gallon? I'm not 100% sure. Make sure it's enough water. You, you can hold about eight gallons with some room here at the top for our pipe to come in the side to recirculate the water back into it and to hold our pump. And of course, some sort of fastener. In this case, screws for us. You can use nails. It really doesn't matter. Let's start to assemble the rack for you. And of course, before I forget, you're going to need some PVC pipe for your fittings, for your bulkhead fitting to divert that water back into the tote. Again, size is going to vary depending on what size bulkhead you buy. It doesn't really matter. One inch, three quarters, it doesn't matter. So if you didn't notice, lumber prices have tripled recently. So we're trying to use the least amount of lumber possible. We're going to have three shelves on our system with two trays side by side. To get a good spacing for that, we are going to cut each one of our treated two by fours in thirds, which is two foot eight. So we're going to have six pieces that are two foot eight inches long. Next step is to take our four legs, the four remaining two by fours, which will form the legs of the rack. And we are going to take 15 inches off of each one of them. Sorry about that, my microphone died. So now we're back here with the complete build. I'll tell you where all the parts and pieces go. So on the front portion of the shelf, we've got our front post, which is six foot seven inches tall. From there, we're gonna come down seven inches and place our first cross brace. From there, we're gonna go two feet on center all the way to the bottom with the next two shelves. So all of those are two feet on center from top to bottom, starting at seven and a quarter. Here on the back portion of the shelf, we've got our first cross support set at six and three quarters inches down from the top. That will give us our fall to the front so the water drains through our pans. This next shelf is set at 24 and three quarters inches down from the top one. And that is so that the water falls back this way in these pans. Next, down to the next level, it'll need to fall back to the front. So the next shelf support on the back side is set at one foot 11 and a quarter. You may decide to have your shelves closer together. You may decide to have them at a little bit more fall. It's up to you, but just make sure it falls in a zigzag pattern from front to back because your water needs to flow through that system. So zigzag pattern, the next shelf needs to be lower than the front, the next shelf lower than the back and so on and so forth. Now that we have the front and rear portion of the structure completed, with our shelves and our trays sitting on there, we need to tie the structures together and we're gonna use our scrap pieces for that. So one place here, about a foot from the top and the other two feet up from the bottom. So on to the next part, the gutter. We've got a 10 foot long gutter here, but we obviously don't need that much. We need actually only about three and a half feet. We're gonna overhang it a little bit on each side here, and that's just so we can accommodate our piping coming down into our tote. And that will perfectly catch everything that it needs to catch here on the bottom. Now these end caps are made to be used without silicone, but it's always good to add some silicone around the inside so they don't leak. And we will be doing that to all of the pieces, including the bulkhead, when we're finished. We have our gutter assembled here, and now we need to hang it from the front. I have three brackets and these one and a quarter inch screws. Pretty simple to just hang it on the lower half of this bottom shelf cross brace. So you wanna have a level handy too because we need some fall on our gutter. About a quarter inch is fine, just so it slopes down toward our bulkhead drain and in where it goes back into our tote. So make sure you always have the proper parts before you start a project. This is embarrassing. This is a bulkhead I already had. It's too big, the flange is too big 
for the bottom of the gutter. It will not seal properly. So I'm off to the store and I'll be right back. Wow. And we're back. We had to actually wait a few days to find a bulkhead fitting that was the proper size that will fit in the bottom of our gutter here. That flange is the right size to snug down onto the flat part of the gutter. Now we have to drill the hole through here and we'll get the rest assembled for you. Let's go. So our water reservoir is going to be tucked in nicely underneath and we're actually not going to cut a hole in the top. We're going to cut a hole in the side of our tote right here to receive our piping. Now we've got two six inch pieces of pipe, we've got an elbow and a connector for the uh, bulkhead fitting right there. We're going to dry fit everything together first and that's important to do dry fitting before you glue it because you never know with uh, PVC piping. So once you've got everything dry fit together, mark out where the hole is uh, going to go roughly so that you can tuck your tote nice and neatly underneath your shelves. So for us, right about here, we're going to mark it. You can cut it out with a hole saw if you have one. If not, really easy, just use an X-Acto knife. So the next thing we need to do is cut a hole in our tote for our water hose. And that water hose is connected, of course, to our pump, which sits in the water reservoir and pumps our water to our system. So the pump comes with several different fittings. You're going to have to determine for yourself which fitting is the best for you for the size of your system and the hose that you purchase. So we've got this three quarter inch hose here. We're going to run that through the side of our tote. So we're coming together. We've got our drain assembly here with the gutter. We have our pump set in our tote with the water hose that's run through the side and up the side. We've got it secured with th some of these uh, pipe straps here, top and bottom. And then we're going to be actually cutting off that hose to run our irrigation line at the top of the entire shelving assembly. Okay, we've got our water line secured. We've got it attached by a barbed connector to our irrigation line, which is a half inch irrigation line, the same type we use in our garden. On that irrigation line, we're going to punch in and place these little button drippers. These little button drippers are two gallon per hour button drippers, and that should give us plenty of water through our system. So place the trays where you want them, and then we're just going to use the punch and punch a hole through the bottom of our irrigation line and we are going to insert our button dripper. Just like that. So we will have three of them hanging over this tray and three of them hanging over this tray over here. We're getting towards the end of the process. One of the last steps we're going to do here is punch holes in the edge of our growing trays here, which is where our seeds are going to uh, germinate and sprout with this little awl. I've usually put uh, eight, nine holes just so the water has enough uh, area to get out. Depending on how your tray is shaped, you're going to need to determine where those holes are going to need to go. And the, this tray has these little ridges. So we're going to poke them on the bottom of these little ridges so all that water gets out of there. So we have everything primed, set up, and ready to go. We're going to do a quick test run and show you how things move through the system. And then we're going to fill it up with our grain and get our fodder grown for our chickens. Now we're going to get our pre-soaked oats in our trays and get that pump on a timer. In a future video, we will show you how the fodder is grown in each stage. But right now, check out this video, which shows you exactly how we built our predator-resistant outdoor chicken run. Have a great day. We love you. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.